Hi guys, happy Sunday. Hello Bonnie and Linda and Debbie and Tina and Sandra and Janet and Kathy. <laughs> Aw, thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate that. I hit the wrong button when I went to go live. I hit the um, happy October. Hello, hello. I almost hit the off button. That would not have been good, right? Oh, they're flying up. I can't get to them fast enough. Hi guys. Hi, Sue. Cool and damp Oakville, Ontario. 10 Celsius, 50 degrees. It is 67 degrees here right now, the year I was born. <laughs> um, hi, Carrie. Hi, Loretta. Hi, Desiree. And Virginia. And Peg. And Letitia. And Melissa. Mid-October already. I know, right? How is it already the 15th of October? Um, that snowman... That might be for something. <laughs> I don't know when we can share, but I did think about just putting it there just so you could see. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for sprinkling. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Hi, Jennifer. How's the weather over in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina right now? Gloomy, gray, and overcast. <laughs> um, hi, Pat. I bet it's still beautiful, though. I love Hilton Head. Hi, Linda. Hi, Denise. Did I say hi to Judy? Hi, Judy. Um, and Linda and Cheryl. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday. It's been um, a busy week as usual. <laughs> all right. Hi, Mickey. Congratulations again on all your ribbons from the Georgia National Fair. So, um, wasn't with you guys last week because I was, oh, my hair is not looking so good, um, was in Rhode Island. And let me just say, I fell in love with that state. It's so pretty. Well, we were in Newport. I fell in love with Newport. I haven't seen the rest of the state, but if it's as it was in Newport, I'm sure it's beautiful. So, it's about 65. It's 100 in Phoenix still. Still, Linda. Wow. Wow, is that uncommon for you guys in um, October? It's, it's uncommon anytime, but well, not for y'all, not in Arizona. Anyway, sorry, I have to take a drink. I have uh, bitten my tongue. And um, <clears throat> it tastes blood. <laughs> so, anywho, so was in Rhode Island last Sunday. And um, if you did not have an opportunity to go to my regular Facebook page, it's too hard to do that and then to share it to my Santa Mictier Designs. Um, so it wants me to upload them to, for it to be into an album. If I can figure out a different way or if any of y'all know a different way, let me know. Um, but basically, I have <laughs> hundreds of photos because I do like to take a picture. And... Um, I didn't think it was usual, Linda. That's really hot. 73 and sunny in Florida, which is good because y'all had some crazy weather this week in Florida with those um, water spouts and tornadoes going through. Anyway, so um, Rhode Island was beautiful, and I have an album on my regular Facebook page. Go check it out. You can see all the pictures, all the beautiful art, and, and um, the cottages that are not so cottagey. <laughs> They're more like mansions. Um, mega mansions and beautiful and just the over the top um, living. I mean, just incredible, incredible. So, his so historical and so much history. So, um, whew, it's hot in here. Um, I'm gonna have to turn my fan on. So, 61 in Oklahoma. Wow, 59 in Maine. Oh, I'm coming to Maine next year. So, we're doing, um, the whole New England um, trail to see all the changing leaves and things like that, to see our son in uh, Connecticut. Um, let me know if you guys have any glitching. I just saw a glitch. That's not good. We haven't had that in a long time. So, um, yes, if it was a cottage, I'd hate to see it. <laughs> Right, Loretta? Right. So... Anyway, it makes me, if you've not seen it, The Gilded Age, which is on Netflix, um, I watched the first season, 
loved it. But now I want to go back and watch it again to kind of put things in context. And then, um, and the second season's on. So I've got to catch up with that. Hi, Lucy. Your pictures are amazing from your vacay. Um, hi, Marilyn. So anyway, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful time to spend with my sister-in-law and, um, you know, just have some girl time and a relaxing weekend. It was a quick weekend. Flew out Thursday, came home Sunday. But um, anyway, been a busy week, crazy week, as usual, with deadlines. In fact, I almost wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go live today. Um, but I have something in mind, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do the background for it with y'all. Um, and then I'm going to request some help to see what you think should be painted on it. I have some ideas, but... Oh, thank you, Debbie. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Lynn. Love to see you too, lady. Um, hi, Dan Hornberger. I love how you call your sister in love. Yes. I'm very, very fortunate and blessed to um, have been married into a wonderful family. Um, and I love, loved dearly my in-laws, may they rest in peace, and then my in, my in-loves, my two brother-in-loves and my sister-in-love, and then I get a bonus sister-in-love with um, the youngest son and his wife. So anyway, um, watching you while waiting for Menopause the Musical to start. Oh, wow. How awesome, Gloria. Wow. I love doing backgrounds, too. I, you know, I... Um, and, and I'll explain where the inspiration came from for this one. Hi, Cheryl Bentley. Okay, I might be talking a little weird because I have a big, <laughs> a big fat tongue right now from biting it like literally moments before we went live. Hi, Patrick. Bonjour. Thinking about you. Um, I saw your post the other day. And hi, Molly Ann. Hello, Chris Avola. My two sweet, sweet friends that do so much for me. Hi, Robin. Okay, so it is 4.07. I could sit here and say hi all day. Um, but a few things. Let's go ahead and get started. Loved that when it was in Toronto. So funny. Oh, the, um, the menopause. I have not seen that. So a couple of things. Um, so on Facebook, if you send stars... And I'm going to bring something up. I think I might have um, said this along the lines of something else. But I saw it the other day on someone's Facebook page. And I kind of thought, wow. <laughs> so not a lecture or anything. But just to Marilyn Healy, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cheryl Bentley, thank you. That's exactly what I was about to start talking about was the stars on Facebook. So I did see this lady. And she she has like thousands of followers that are on within minutes and um, someone said, and it was very similar to one I had seen before, but different lady, um, and said something about, um, she said, you know, thank you if you've given stars, da 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 da, it allows me to do what I love doing. And someone said, well, you said this was a free live, and so why should I have to give you any stars? And I thought, well, it's kind of rude. Um, the thing is, there are a lot of people that do it and, and make money doing it and need to make money doing it to take the time to do the lives. My thing with um, doing the stars or the money on YouTube is I donate that to, um, oh, so sad, Lucy. I, um, I donate that to the World Central Kitchen. That was my charity this year. Next year, I will have another charity. Um, and all the money that you guys donate through YouTube or through the stars on Facebook is donated. So um, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Loretta. Thank you, Cheryl. And Lucy Matt just said that Suzanne Summers passed away at 76 from breast cancer. Very sad. Very, very sad. Um, oh my goodness. So I love doing backgrounds too. Not coming up on Facebook. Huh. Sorry, Kathy. I'm, I'm up. I've got both screens up. Facebook and you froze at stars. Uh, maybe refresh and see if it comes up for you, Marianne. Am I frozen for anybody else? Because I am looking at my, my screens and I'm on both. <laughs> I'm talking on both. So I know, right? So I am wearing my Hello Pumpkin shirt because let me just say, I have maybe two months out of the year I can wear it. So it is a Cracker Barrel. 
They really need donations too. Yes, they do. They do. Right, Marilyn? I, yes. All working great. Great, great. Not frozen. Appreciate it. Again, if you do, just refresh. Maybe that's what um, was happening. So, anyway, um, have a couple of more deadlines that I have to do by tomorrow. One of them, let's talk about real quick, and that is, hi, Mom. Thank you. Video and audio is great on Facebook. Thanks. It is. My hair is not great. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I'm not seeing over on YouTube. Let's pull that down just a little so I can see y'all's comments. Okay, great. Thank you, Beverly. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. So, I know that um, many of you have told me that you are not getting my newsletters from my website. I will say that the last one I sent out was the beginning of September. Um, if you don't get it, feel free to go to my website. And when you go to my website, if a window pops up for you to put your email address in, it did not take it. Even if you've done it three times, if you go to my website and that window pops up for whatever reason, put your email address in it if you want my newsletter. Um, they're not farmed out, they're not saved, they're not sold, okay? The other thing is, I have not done a newsletter. <laughs> oh, thank you, Robin. Not today. Um, I, I curled it too early today and then did nothing with it. Um, oh, thank you, Janet. I did that one time, too, on somebody's, and it didn't show up, and it actually didn't go through. But we'll see. Uh, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so I have a newsletter ready to go. In fact, my husband is editing it as we speak. Um, it has a free printable. It has some links to a couple of lessons that you guys can watch. And um, yeah, so I have a newsletter going out tomorrow. So if you would like to get that, make sure that you have your email address in my um, on my website if the box pops up. Tomorrow, if you don't get it, like let's say mid-afternoon, late afternoon, make sure you check your spam folder, your junk folder, all the folders. Um, and if you don't, then just send me a message through my website and I'll get that sent off to you. Okay. I use a, um, I use a different service. So, um, it, it doesn't come like from my personal email address. So they house everything. It goes out through them and I haven't had any that shows that it was denied or didn't go through. Um, so anyway. Okay, so I got happy mail this week. Let me show you my adorable happy mail from my dear sweet friend, Laura Haberstraw. And um, so she, how flippin' amazing are these? These pumpkins with the little cinnamon stick. I love them. They're so my colors too for fall. I love this one is multicolored. So clever, so cool. Um, so Laura, sweetie, thank you so much for those. I know I'm not going to get them set back up and probably will knock some things over. <laughs> um, anyway, and then on YouTube. Oh, that's awesome. Well, hello, Jennifer, Linda's sister. Glad that you're here. Thanks for watching. Um, all righty. So on YouTube, Beverly, you were the first name that I saw comment, and on Facebook um, was Alice. So you ladies, go to my website, click on the contact button, message me, and let me know what e-packet you would like that's currently on my website, all right? And I will get that sent off to you guys after the live, so aren't those cute? They're so cute, and so I have behind me some pumpkins that I glittered up with, um, oh gosh, what is that called? Art glitter, I think, and it's real fine. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So, alrighty. And then we had some giveaways. So, let's do those first. Um, let's start with this one. So I have, well, should we just come down here? Let's come right down here. And I have all my stencils to share with you today. Um, okay, so, this, I have three giveaways from last week. I have three more for next week. Um, and let me just show you one of the ones for next week. I haven't painted it yet, but this is going to go out to somebody. It's a new little kit. So how fun is that? Um, okay. 
But this week we have one winner that's getting uh, four of my slimline stencils. It's kind of hard to see with that glare. Let's angle them up so you can see them, but real detailed and fun. And then a little sunflower laser cut um, ornament or thing. And Lisa Germain, your name popped up on the wheel. Um, remind, let me remind you guys too that when I do the lives and I do the giveaways, you have until my next live to contact me uh, with your mailing information so that I can get those shipped to you. If I don't hear from you, then unfortunately those items go back into the stash and um, and will be given away another time. So if you're watching, you know, a month later and you see that I called your name, I'm so sorry. So um, there's just too many of y'all to, to try and track down everyone. So I'm going to put that on y'all. If you win, contact me. Let me know your, your mailing information. Okay, so I have a phone stand and then the sunflower laser cut, this pumpkin, which I love, so cute, and a snowflake. And the winner of that is Chrissy. Is it Vader? Vader? Chrissy, Chrissy. Message me your mailing address and I will get this shipped off to you. Hello, Cecilia. Hello, Jennifer Carmichael. Glad that you're here. Okay, and then the last one, I had a set of um, brushes that Dynasty gave me at NAMTA uh, to give away. So we have my favorite mop brush, which is the medium soft flat top. It's not intended to be used as a mop, but that's my go-to mop. Um, I love these wave brushes. They're great for um, lines on a petal or a leaf or just making really cool. I mean, you could do a plaid for that matter with that brush. Um, a small mezzaluna, which is my go-to dry brushing brushes. An angle brush, black silver, and a water lily six filbert. Oh, and then I had to throw in an, a laser little sunflower for that too. And the winner for that, the we, a number that number, the name that came up on the wheel <laughs> is Don Pixelski. Pixelski, Don. I have your information. I will get those shipped off to you. Now, if you want to send me a little message and remind me, <laughs> that would be great too. Okay, so I had this idea for a little um, plaid background. And so I have the, this breadboard that I have on my website. And I went ahead and painted it with... Uh, Deco Art Laurel. This is such a beautiful color. Hello, Marie. Okay. Um, I went ahead and painted that and dried it. And do I have... Oh, I don't. I always forget to grab it to tell you guys. But I did paint it first with the Deco Art Multi-Purpose Sealer. Okay. I always do my wood first with that multi-purpose sealer. Uh, especially MDF. I just don't want that grain to kind of come up. So... Um, painted it with laurel, and I'm going to take a little sanding block and just give it a little bit of sanding just to kind of soften that look. Just a little, nothing major. These are just your nail buffer files that you can get on Amazon. Okay, I like the softness that gives the color. So I'm going to use this one. This is uh, a Tim Holtz. Let me see if I have that written down. Right there, it's the Tim Holtz Shifter Mint Larian Stencil. Say that fast 10 times. Um, anyway, I do sell these on my website. Um, if you use the discount code ART, you will get a discount even on things that are on sale, okay? So I'm gonna use this to do a plaid background. I did so on my bunny from last year, and can I find it in my studio? No. So, I'm just gonna have to show you fresh. Uh, with new colors because, let's zoom in just a little. Um, as y'all know, I love to share with you what my membership group did. Um, and this month, our inspiration, our artist from the past um, that we're taking inspiration from is um, Piet Mondrian. So this might look a little more familiar, this talented fella, Jonathan Fong, um, but that style of block color blocking and um, was very big in the 60s and 70s. 
And so we took some inspiration for that, and um, I designed this page for us to do. We primarily paint in our art journal only because we don't need to go out and get a thousand surfaces or ruin, you know, a ten dollar surface or have, you know, no wall space because we have so many surfaces. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a surface, <laughs> but I also love that I can go to my journal and pull things out. So I'm taking color inspiration from this because I was so inspired to do a plaid. All right. Now, there is also a couple other, there are a couple other stencils that I have on my website that are also the Tim Holtz. This is the um, Shifter um, Peppermint, okay? So the Peppermint stencil, and then this one has three stencils in it, all varying lines, all right? So that's why it's a little bit more expensive, but you've got all these different lines that you can crisscross and create custom plaids for your, um, wait, I, I guess to be cheating if I use the plaid stencil you sent me in the kit. <laughs> no, no, not at all, Loretta, that too. So um, this one that, we, that I used and shared with you guys in the Hello Winter, this is an M square plaid. But what I wanted was a little more, um, well, I'll show you what I wanted in my head, what I'm going to do and share with you. But this one, you definitely could come in and change the colors out. It's a little bit tricky to do that. Um, so doing the lines the way I'm going to show you, I think will give you um, a lot of possibilities. So, all righty. Oh, Claudette, I'm so sorry. Maybe refresh because mine's, mine's going strong. It does look like the Partridge Family colors, right? Um, or the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so let's move these out of the way. I'm going to do what's in my head. And then if we have time, I might um, switch up the colors. But we'll see. Okay, so this is Laurel. All right. And I have my um, stencil. And I'm going to use the same colors that I used on my uh, Piet Mondrian piece that I share with my membership group. So Laguna. Amandine, that's the background color, which is Laurel. Uh, Sunset Gold, absolutely gorgeous. If you don't have this, you can use Marigold. Um, and then I was gonna use um, Burnt Sienna or Asphaltum, and I actually decided to use Quinacridone Gold. Um, I am a Tim Holtz junkie too, if I say so myself. So Laurel came out last year, and um, that has sticking stripes. Ah, that will make a very cool plaid. You know, and you can always make a plaid with um, uh, tape, but pff, this is so much easier, okay? All right, so let's lay out our colors. I'm gonna get some Laguna. I'm also gonna go ahead and put on my palette some warm white, because I wanna show you a cool thing you can do to get your initial colors. So we'll put out a little cool white. Hello Kay, um, some Sunset Gold, and I'm going to wait on this one, um, only because the fluid acrylics are, um, they're very fluid, they're highly pigmented, and I tend to not put them out until I'm ready to use them because they, I don't want it to dry out. Alrighty, now I'm going to use my favorite go-to Dynasty brush, uh, Stencil Pro brushes. I have all these in the 3 8 size. I did go ahead and grab some of the um, sponge applicators. I have these on my website as well. You can also use makeup wedges, okay? I'll show you all three, all righty? So, um, and painter's tape. I usually don't tape when I stencil, but I want to make sure that this does not move and my li lines are not wonky. Um, one thing, if your tape is really, really strong, just take it and like put it over your shirt or something just to get a little bit of the tack off. Um, I, I tend to do that if it's a really sticky, sticky tape. So let's go here, and I'm gonna line this up so that it, I want those lines to go right off the end and I want that edge to go right to the edge of my surface. And hopefully my glasses are gonna cooperate today, or my eyes, I should say. 
Okay, so we're going to tape that in place. Now, you'll notice this is kind of, you know, it moves around. So you're going to want to hold it in place when you're doing it. Um, I'm going to start, I think I want those big stripes going down. Oh, I didn't put any almondine out. Um, I think I'm going to put some almondine in the smaller lines. And let's do the uh, turquoise, that Laguna. So I'm going to use a stencil brush first, load it up, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that warm white. Okay, kind of mix that around, and I'm going to tap it off. Now, typically I would sit there and, um, right, Denise, plaids remind me of fall, same. That's, that's why, again, I had this in my mind, and I have an idea of what I want painted on it, but y'all are going to help me. Um, and then next week, I will have a new design painted on this background. Okay. Um, so I typically don't pounce, but I am going to pounce this color. You can also go long, but see how I'm holding it? You can go long strokes, trying to stay out of the other end of that stencil. And then I'm going to pick up more paint, tap off the excess. Again, just kind of swipe it. Down that line. All right, now with the sponge applicator, same thing, it's dry. A Little bit of both those colors, tap it together. And this one I'm gonna have to come up and finish that, um, that line for it to go all the way up. So again, you can tap this color. When you brush it on, it tends to go a little bit thinner so I would recommend tapping it on. Or you can swipe the first layer and then come back and um, tap the second layer. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off my brush really well, pick up more of the Laguna, and I'm gonna come back, and I want this to be a little bit stronger. Now, if you want this to be soft and subtle, that's where you would wipe off most of that paint. Oop, I don't want any more white. You would wipe off most of that paint and do um, soft circular motions, okay? And that's gonna give you a softer look. The other thing is, I probably will do a little sanding on it when I'm done, just to take some of that color down. Um, also, let's let you guys know, it's me, myself, and I. I'm here in my studio by myself with all y'all virtually. And so if you've got a question and I don't see it, please feel free and you really need or want an answer to it. Um, you can message me on my through my website. Um, I will go back and look. On YouTube, it's a little bit hard. I have to answer you in the comments um, under the video because the chat's closed. Okay, so let's look at that. All right. Now, if you have anything that goes over, you can take your background color and use it as an eraser. Um, I'm not too fussed about that because I know I'm going to have a design on it. And if it shows, I will go back and clean it up. I also don't mind the variation in color. If it's a little... Um, one's a little bit more blue... All righty, so let's come up here and let's just start right there. That way I can finish this line going all the way to the top and then I'll move it and do that. Okay, so again, a little bit of that aqua, a little bit of warm white, just to get some opacity to that um, and take away a little bit more of that um, green color. And then we'll dry it. The fluid acrylics, Linda, are very, um, they're a lot thinner. They are transparent. They are my go-to favorite paint to paint with. I absolutely love the fluid acrylics. Um, and they're highly pigmented. So a little goes a long way. So I know sometimes the price of them can be, oh, you know, a little sticker shock, but they really, um, they really do go a long way. 
Okay, the other thing is make sure you don't have paint on your hands when you go to hold this down. Again, there are many ways you can create and make a plaid. I'm doing the easy way. Let me say that. Um, you can tape it, dry it, tape it, dry it, tape it, <laughs> dry it, um, and repeat to create a plaid. I'm sure there are a thousand and one videos on YouTube how to do it as well. All right. Hi, Donna. No problem. Okay, I have to turn my fan on, guys. Whew. Oh, man. Okay. The other thing, I, um, I've had them and just completely forgot to put them on my website after OKC Painting Palooza, is I do have four of the um, DecoArt neon colors on my website. All right, so let's lift that up. I'm just going to dry it. Okay, let's go over here because that one needs to go right off the edge. There we go. Hi, Cindy Braden. No problem. Glad you made it. Okay, so we're going to line that back up. Um, I'll just show you the sponge. Again, when you do that, you don't want to get it wet. Load it up with whatever your color is. I do like the brush. I feel like I can control it a little bit more. And then I'm just going to kind of pinch that sponge. And then let's get that. Oh, let's dry that. My luck, I'll go right through it. Using my Ranger heated tool, love that tool. It's the best heat tool, I think, on the market. All right, so we're gonna put that there, tape it in place, and I'll come back with that sponge. Oh, thank you, Donna. I'm excited, and I love my projects I'm teaching. Um, both there and the ones I've submitted for Oklahoma. Can't wait for those selections to come out and then also for the uh, catalogs to come out so you guys can see everything. And when I can share, share, I'll share. I do have a couple of them hanging in my studio right now. Hint, hint. But anyway. Okay, so that's the sponge. Okay, not my favorite. In fact, I even went over so I'm going to take my baby wipe, wrap it around my index finger, and just get that off. Okay, let's go to our heat tool, dry it. Okay, I'm going to lay this back in place. Make sure that it's lined up. Secure that tape. Okay, and then the two lines. Let me think. I might do two, 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 two. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to stick with the brush from now on. So, um, uh, thank you, Donna. Yeah, I did sell quite a few, so thank you so much. Um, again, that stencil pro and i'm going to load it up with sunset gold and a little bit of warm white again just to get some opacity to block that uh, green color and then i'm just going to tap it you can also brush it back and forth just be careful not to go underneath the the stencil um well, that sounds fun, Deb Bloomfield. 50 frog pins. Are you giving those away? Act of ran, uh, random, act of, random acts of kindness pins? If you've ever been to a convention, you know that Linda Park is so generous and paints a ton. 
and gives them away the entire event. I have a, a lot of them. <laughs> so. Oh, a makeup sponge is great to paint the back of ornaments. Yes. You know, another great way just to spruce up the back of an ornament as well is just stencil it. Stencil it with something, you know, that's swirly or has a little bit of a design. Or if you've got this in your design on the front, do a little plaid on the back. I think that would be pretty. Okay, so we are going to, so I know I'm gonna do those two and then that, and I'm gonna do those two. So let's go ahead and load up our brush. Sunset Gold, a um, little bit of warm white. And we will just get that on there. If it goes under, not the end of the world, just clean it up with your background color. I love fall. I love the colors of fall. I love the tastes and smells of fall. I'm a summer girl though. I, I'll never not like summer, even living in Georgia with the heat and the humidity. I'm still a summer girl um, because the beach is my happy, happy place. But at the same time, I love this time of year where it's not too cold. There's a little bit of a chill in the air, um, but you know, sweater weather, smell of onion or um, oranges and cloves apples i love to put that in um, a pot on my stove with some water and just turn it on and let it boil and fill the house with you know those smells of autumn okay so now i'm just picking up the sunset gold right hello donna baker happy that you're here So just sunset gold. I could have dried. I probably should have dried, but it seems like it's already dry, so not gonna worry about it. If you go over, don't worry, you can fix it up with a brush. So be thinking about what you think I should paint on here. When it's done, is when I'm gonna ask you guys to put in the comments what you think as far as with the colors. Um, and I'm going to paint that this week. And there, like I said, right there. So let's just fix it. I'm gonna get a brush. A little bit of Laguna. So I have a little bit of water in my brush. Okay, we got a little there. Just to keep us clean. All right, let's go ahead and dry this and we'll finish the yellow all the way up. Okay, yeah, it looks like a lot of y'all are summer girls too, but fall is pretty. And I don't mind rain. I, I actually like rain if I don't have to go anywhere. But if I have to go somewhere, it's like, ugh. Okay, tape it in place. Again, Sunset Gold, a little bit of the um, it's 72 <laughs> in Texas. Wow. I can't believe it's still in the hundreds in Arizona. That's just crazy. Laguna is a gorgeous color. I love Laguna and Peacock Teal. Um, Laguna is a little on the brighter side. Peacock Teal, to me, is a little more like desert turquoise, a little on that darker side. All right, so we've got our yellow, our yellow. Let's dry that. Now, you could wash off your stencil if you're worried that it's gonna pick up some of the color. I'm not too fussed, but like that yellow that went under, I don't know if it seeped under or if my line uh, stencil just moved. Okay. 
Now I'm going to line this back up. And let's go ahead and get out that um, quinacridone gold. Say that fast 10 times, quinacridone gold. I think I've shared with you guys before, my husband edits my pattern packets. So if there's any mistakes, it's his fault. No, I'm joking. But, um, and uh, I'll hear him and they're going quinacridone, quinacridone. Yes, I mixed that with a little bit of warm white as well. You can mix the fluid acrylics with your regular acrylics. You can use them as a, a glaze, a wash over your acrylics, or you can mix them with it. Which if you've watched my videos, my lives, you know that I like to um, take Payne's Gray and use that to darken some of my colors. So again, just a little, get that initial layer. Hold that down, tap, tap, tap. Um, if you don't have quinacridone gold, you can always use uh, burnt sienna. Okay, now I am gonna dry this. That's about the closest color um, that I have seen to quinacridone gold without mixing. However, you can mix saffron yellow and a little asphaltum and get a gorgeous color. Um, I won't say it's exactly like this, but I'm gonna give you a really pretty color. Okay, so I'm gonna tap that on. Since it is transparent, it might take another layer, but I don't think so. I think with that warm white mixed in, hopefully it's gonna give us the opacity that we want. Okay, now the other thing is, if you're worried like, oh, I'm gonna get over that line, take some paper towel. You can lay it on both sides, just to give yourself a little peace of mind that it's not gonna go over. If I was fussed, you know, worried that it would go over um, and ruin it, then I would definitely block it off. But I don't care, I'll, I'll fix up anything that gets messed up with paint and just use it as an eraser. Like on that blue. Yes, it has been a while, Denise, since I used the media line. I, um, again, it is my go-to favorite. I sell it on my website because it is my favorite. Okay, pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of quinacridone gold. Okay, and then we'll just see if we can leave it taped. There we go, dry it. Hi, Sharon. Wipe this off, get just quinacridone gold. Okay, <laughs> and let's dry it. Is that going back and forth? I, I do think I'm gonna put a stripe in between, maybe with Almondine. Almondine's another new color from last year. The 2022 colors, guys, that came out last year were actually supposed to be 2023 colors. Um, I know many of y'all have wondered where the new colors are um, and when they were coming out. I have to fix this because it just is bothering me. Um, but I do know that 2024 is being worked on, so are being finalized. All right, so. Just clean that up a little bit. And then let's line it up again because we want to put the 
Quinacridone Gold right there. And just tape it to your workstation. If the lines go, you know, goes past your surface, which it will. All right, let's get a little bit more of that. Thank you guys. Don't forget, forget to hit that uh, thumbs up button on YouTube and like, comment, and share to be entered into the giveaways so I can send out some happy mail. Oh, Sandy, you didn't go down far enough, silly girl. I did the same thing. I don't have, I don't want to have to move it twice, so I do want to make sure that the um, bottom of those go right off the edge, meaning the bottom right here, see, where that's open. They don't have to move it twice to get it to go up further. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that. Get that color on. And I was a very bad girl because I could not find this stencil. So I got a new one <laughs> from my inventory. And then I was telling my husband, I said, oh, I got the mark that I took one of these. And he said, well, let's try and find your book full because I have a book full of them. Very close to where I looked before. And he found them. So now I have two. Um, and I might go ahead and switch to the other clean one. But basically you're going to do all your lines that go um, down first. You could do down and then, you know, do some sideways and then come back and do some down. But I'm going to show you a trick how you can fool uh, the look. and go over some lines. So now just the quinacridone gold. Okay, hello Robin Wilson. Thank you, Gail. Yes, of course, you know, when you're <laughs> When you're not looking for something, you find it. Like the other day with my membership group, I could not find any of my pieces that I had submitted for Tennessee um, because we had our vents cleaned and I had to put everything away before I went on my trip. Well, I found them when I wasn't looking for them, which is good. All right, so we've got that. And again, what the heck, Sandy? When I did this with my bunny, I don't think I got one overspill of paint but paint is amazing right you fix it up erase with that color okay I'm not too fussed not too fussed with it when I get it all done if it's still sticking out you can come back with the um, color and warm white Go back over it, let it dry, and then come back with your color. Okay, let's do another line, but I'm going to switch stencils. I want to do a line in between those. So let me think how I want to do that one line. I'm going to do... I don't want them touching. So... Oh, I might go to my shifter. Let's see. Nope, those aren't small enough. The other one. All right. Give me a second. <laughs> so I can figure this out. There we go. So this big one, I'm going to put over the second small stripe, which is that yellow one right there. Okay. And then let's tape it in place. And then I'm going to go with the Amandine, load it up. Now, it's got a pretty heavy white base to it, so I'm not going to add any um, 
that actually is going to give me a stripe right on it, I think. Why did I just have that figured out? Now I don't feel like I have it figured out. There. So this little one is going to go over. Let me just do a little swatch. Why am I, nope, that's exactly what I want. You know when you know it makes sense? <laughs> you can't. You gotta get it on there. There we go. Okay, I like that color in the in between those. So let's do another in between the orange. I have to remember what I did. I stuck that over. And that one's going to have to go up. Again, Almondine. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sandra. I feel like I'm making a big mess with this. But it is my, it's my go-to way to create a simple plaid. And not have to tape everything down. And I do like that this one has the uh, different stripes, the different size stripes. Alrighty. Yeah. And then we'll extend it up there. Awesome. All right, two down, two to go. Maybe we can start going the other way. Thank you, Molly Ann. I greatly appreciate that. I try. Okay, then over that yellow line. Again, Almondine. Let's, ooh, that one got a little close. You know what? I don't care. I'm leaving it. I lined it up with the small line instead of the big line. And we'll finish that off right there. Okay. Other side in between those two orange lines. Then we're going to start layering the other way. And I think the stripes going the opposite direction, I'm going to make that almondine even bigger, like the blue. Um, just because I do like that. Um, I do like that color. And it will soften and just kind of lighten things up a little bit. Where am I at, Sandy? Okay, I think you could throw in like um, burgundy would be beautiful, plantation pine would be pretty, that almondine and a burgundy I think would be really pretty. I, orange, 
I used orange on my um, page that I shared with you guys. I loved the orange. I just I thought it was a little too much of a punch of color, so opted to go with that um, quinacridone gold. Alrighty, so let's go this way. Look like a fabrics from the. Ah, I'll take that, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, so going this way, we won't have to move it up and down. Um, I think I do want to just get that off right there. I'm going to tape it in place, and then let's tape it in place up here. Again, I don't want it to take my paint off, so I'm going to take a little bit of the tack away. Okay, keeping with that almondine, let's do the big stripes first. I do recommend when you um, when you're doing this and you're working with lines and you're trying to stay straight is you know either to stand and look right over it. I'm looking through the bottom of my bifocals and praying that I'm in the lines um, because you do want to take your time to make sure you're not going over that stencil. Um, I saw so many amazing pictures, Gail, of the eclipse. So pretty. We had a very overcast, cloudy day, so didn't see anything. You know, the best way to figure out what color combination you like, and if you want to, you know, alternate what colors you do on the stripes, um, instead of, you know, like what I'm doing right now, all Amandine for the big stripes going this way, all Laguna for the stripes going that way, best way to figure out what you want is to do it, is to paint it. Because at the end of the day, it's paint. You can sand it off. You can paint over it. Oh, that moved. So. That's one uh, thing too I will recommend is when you use your heat tool, make sure you lift your stencil up and not heat over your stencil. I think that might be what's wrong with my little wart stencil bit right there. Okay. Meaning don't lay it down and do your heat tool right over it. So, All right, let's go ahead and take care of those lines. So I think I'm gonna do yellow, sunset gold. Let's turn it this way. And I'll take a little bit of the warm white. And we'll do that first stripe. And then I think I'm gonna do to do blue a little blue stripe instead of doing two 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 I think I'm gonna alternate and we'll do this one blue get a little bit of that warm white in there or it will not cover up those colors and that's okay if you don't want it to if you want to be able to see the the crisscross and intersection of those colors then um, you know you don't have to use that warm white to make it more opaque. I'm not going for full opaque, just I wanna take some of that color down so that you see more of the stripe instead of the mix. Okay, all right, so then we will do um, quinacridone gold with some warm white. We're just going to alternate these colors. And then the next one's going to be gold. This one's going a lot quicker. 
See how that lifted up. So again, try and hold your stencil in place. Oops, wrong color, Sandy. For that matter, you could do all the stripes warm white, then come back and start laying in your color. Um, so gold, then blue. some of that almondine right there where I totally hosed that. Back to the yellow. <laughs> I feel like I'm juggling brushes here. Macrodone gold. Back to the Laguna. I think I did that one. I'm just tapping off the excess so that it doesn't seep under. Um, and I feel like I'm starting to speed up a little and I probably should slow down because it's gonna... There we go. All right, so let's... Dry those. And then you want to line back up. So I'm gonna flip this so that I can line it up with that and maximize more of that stencil. Line that up. And we left off with blue. So let's get a little more color out. All righty, and some that. So what did I say? We are blue, we need uh, quinacridone gold. So a little warm white, quinacridone gold. Lay that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and do warm white and sunset gold. And then back to blue with a little bit of white. Almondine for our big stripe right down center there. And I'm kind of um, tapping and pulling straight down that stencil so that it doesn't move all righty almost your life hello sharita okay blue right yes <laughs> and then yellow. I should have written a guide. What colors I was doing. Yellow and then back to blue. And then we'll come back with just the color. So wipe off your brush really, really well. Come back to just your color. Oh, thank you, Linda. I love these colors together, too. So we're going to do blue. And then gold. Oh, Sandy, slow down. Am I... Speeding up because I feel like, okay, y'all are probably like, hey, we're just painting lines. <laughs> it's a little boring. 
back to the quinacridone gold. Oh, I just love that color. So vibrant. So pretty, so clean. That's Almondine. Let's come back and get that Almondine right there. Not sure if I did the yellow here, so we're gonna do it again, just in case. All right, ooh, loving that. Okay, let's dry that. And what I wanna do is I want to um, I think I just put paint in my hair. Um, I want to bring some of these smaller lines over the larger um, almondine lines just so that it doesn't look like they're all sitting on top. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's get back to finish this. And so we've got yellow is our next. And then blue and A little bit of blue. Do I already have blue there? I do. I already have blue there, so let's just do it again. Um, Almondine. Almondine up here. have the gold. You could even mix any of those colors, you know, like the um, quinacridone gold, you can mix it with that almondine. Again, it's got a nice white content to it. So, and then I think this one is yellow. I'm just gonna do that. Little bit of warm white, right off the edge. Okay. So back to Amandine, second layer, second layer, or blue. You, and if you don't have this many stencil brushes, you know, you can take hand sanitizer and, um, oh, I think I missed a stripe. I did. That's okay. We're going to make it yellow. Hello, Sandy. Um, you can use hand sanitizer in between your colors. That will evaporate, and then your brush will be ready to use. So, I just happen to have a few. And I like that I'm not having to wash it out, so. But if you do, and you use the hand sanitizer, you wanna make sure that it's completely dry before you move on. Almondine. Alrighty, so I think I have all those on. I think I ended up putting a color. Alrighty, let's dry this. Then we'll come back and lay these in place. And just a few. I don't want to put them, um, you know, that line all the way down, but just over that almondine big stripe. So that it looks like it's incorporated into the plaid. So I am going to take this with a baby wipe, and I'm just gonna get a little bit of this wet paint off. Just a regular baby wipe, no lotion, no uh, perfume in it. Okay, and when you do that, you wanna make sure you dry it off. We don't want anything wet going over to our piece. Okay. Why don't you make the sturdier stunts? Why don't they make... Right. It's hard when you're trying to make a long line. Um, you know, if you put a break in there, like a normal stencil, then you have to stop and then move it. 
Um, so this is one of those that, um, it actually has a nice thick mylar, but yes, it's, it can be a little tricky. Okay, so let's come here and line that up where we had the blue. And that is yellow. Okay. So I am gonna turn this sideways, just to keep my hand out of the way. And I wanna come in with the gold and a little bit of white, um, excuse me, the sunset gold. And then right over this line, I'm going to put that color. I'll dry it and I'll show you. I don't think I need two pieces. So see how that incorporated that put that yellow right over that almondine line. I'm not going to do it on both of the yellows. I think I'm just going to do it on yellow, skip one. On the quinacridone gold, skip one. Okay. So see what I mean? How that one goes over these stripes. Yeah, the thing with, um, you know, with it freezing, a lot of times, unfortunately, that has to do more with your server than, um, than Facebook itself unfortunately, and I only know that from experience. All right, let's go to our quinacridone gold. And again, I'm just gonna do it right over the, oh, we need some warm white. Just get quinacridone. Okay, I'm digging how that puts it all into and incorporates it so that it's not sticking out like a sore thumb. Okay. So we did, missed that one, did that one, did that one, missed that one. So now we'll do this yellow and put that up and over. <laughs> right, Linda, that's why I was saying it would have probably been helpful if I had come up with a you know, a key and wrote it down. Like, okay, you're gonna do this color here and this color here, but like I said, it's just paint, just paint. Let's go back to the gold, a little bit of, my thing is I'm trying not to get my top of my head in the shot, in the way of the camera. Now, like I said, any place that it looked like it went over, what I probably will do is wait till I design on it um, with whatever we come up with that I should paint on it. And then um, if something is amiss or needs to be cleaned up, I'll clean it up then. Okay, let's do that gold line up here. Okay, 
we're getting there. We have one more stripe to do. Lay that back in place. And do just sunset gold. Again, where it overlaps that almondine. Okay, so looking at the colors and the plaid, I um, it is a little on the very bright side. So I have a couple of options. I can tone it down with a little bit of asphaltum, um, which I might do when I paint whatever it is I'm gonna paint on it. Um, the other thing is you can sand it back a little like I mentioned in the beginning. So I might sand it just a touch, um, just to take away that, you know, stenciled look. Okay, so we did the second, and then we did the first, and then we did the first, now we're gonna do the second. If you don't have almondine, you could use that warm white. It would make really pretty stripes too and help tone down some of that color. Um, just the clinacridone now. All right. So, drop in the comments. Give me some of your thoughts what you think would be um, pretty on here. I'm thinking sunflower was my first thought. Um, a pumpkin, of course. I love to paint pumpkins. You're using buttermilk? Oh, awesome. Yeah, buttermilk's pretty as well. So is light buttermilk. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to sand it. Now, if for some reason I don't like it the way it looks sanded, I'm just going to repaint it later when I decide what it is we're going to paint on it. So um, I'm just going to do a little, very lightly sand that. Okay. I think it'd be really pretty with that um, asphaltum around the edges. Okay, so fall leaves. Ooh, leaves. Yeah, my first thought was a sunflower. Pumpkin and greenery, acorns. Um, pumpkin and sunflower. Hello, Mona, good to see you on. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. Rusty colored poppy. Ooh. Hi, Rebecca. Scarecrow, hot apple cider. Huh. Acorn, pumpkin, leaves, sunflower. <laughs> All that. <clears throat> I think leaves and acorn would be really pretty too. Um, and then I have some laser cut words that I have thankful, a um, couple others, and I'm thinking maybe thankful with something painted on it. What you think? It's busy, isn't it? You could always bring in, you know, bring up a little bit of that blue if you wanted that blue to come up more there, but I think I'm gonna stick with that. Alrighty, let me look and see. Apples, mm, I've been thinking about painting an apple. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe a, yeah, um, a red one, but it's a little more golden. Um, what'd you guys think? First off, let me say thank you guys so much 
um, for everyone that donated the stars. I greatly appreciate that. Um, again, that money will go to the World Central Kitchen, feeding people around the world um, that are in desperate need of it. Your pumpkin spice coffee cup would look great. It would look cute, wouldn't it? More brown. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to do some asphaltum around the edge to kind of give it that vignette look. Um, and here's a tip too. If you want to tone it down even more, oh my goodness, my hair. <laughs> um, you can always do a, a clear matte spray or do matte medium over it. And then you could do, oh my gosh, that's a cute idea, candy apple. Um, you could do a wash of asphaltum to tone it down which I kind of want to do, but I'm going to matte medium it first, let it dry, and then when we come back next week, I will let you guys know what I did. All right, and um, whatever I paint on it will get written up, and we'll have a pattern packet for it next week. So anyway, Autumn Joy Plant. Huh, I don't know what that is. An Autumn Joy Plant. A slice of pumpkin pie. That would be cute. Corn stalk with acorn and squirrel. I've also been thinking about painting a squirrel lately. Okay, guys, have a wonderful day. Um, go paint some plaid on something. And um, get those brushes out. Have fun painting. If you've not painted in a while, grab something. Grab a piece of wood. Grab a journal page. Grab something and just slap some paint on it. Um, that motion and that action of doing it will help get that momentum going. Okay? I know I say it all the time. <laughs> so... All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Thanks for being here. A turkey, a turkey would be cute. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of space, but we'll see. I'll let you guys know. All right, have a good one. Talk to y'all later. Bye.